Hello! If you are new here, I am Cheyenne Winter and I'm an artist based in Michigan. And today I'm making some art about Michigan that features a Michigan landscape, some wetlands, and some Michigan waterfowl. I'm really excited to bring you along. So I've taped down my paper and I'm using a paper that's kind of fragile so I've taped around the edges with washi tape first and then gone in with a blue masking tape so that I can actually tape it down to help keep it from warping. Here I'm mixing some blue, it looks like probably ultramarine, with some burnt umber, which is my favorite way to desaturate blues and make grays, which is what I've done here. I've made a color for the sky. I'm putting in some purples for some clouds. Most of this, if not all of it, is going to get covered later on. I am at this point just covering the paper so that I'm not working into a blank canvas. I hate working directly into white. I feel like it really messes up my values and it makes it really hard for me to make color decisions. I'm not especially confident when it comes to making color decisions if I'm not painting like hyper realistically. If I'm just mixing to match exactly what I'm seeing, I'm fine, but if I'm trying to make more unique and creative decisions I have a really hard time. Which is something that I was specifically exploring with this painting. I wanted to go outside of my comfort zone a little bit. I've been really, really inspired by artists like Lee Ellickson and Al over at Little Star Nerd on here and on Instagram. I am absolutely in love with their different styles. Lee is a little more painterly and kind of um, their art feels kind of more go with the flow and Al is really precise and um, more realistic and I feel like I want to fall closer to the Al side of the spectrum but I want to be able to use colors the way that they do. I am absolutely in love with the ways that they use saturated blues and pinks and yellows and greens and they're not like 100% afraid of brush strokes and texture. It, I find them really inspiring and so I wanted to kind of try <laughs> to find a happy medium between that and my style today that felt approachable and accessible and not too scary. I'm the kind of artist where if I don't know exactly what I'm doing, I can get really in my own head and kind of scared um, and like really tense up and have a hard time. And luckily I didn't psych myself out for this. I actually had a really good time painting this the whole time. There was a couple of points where I was like, oh God, I don't know if I can do this. And it's mostly in here where I'm painting these large sections for the grass. I wanted to push my values, but I was too afraid to really push them. I see the way that other people are able to apply darker values straight out of the gate or whatever, <laughs> however that's said. And I wanted to be able to do that, but I don't quite, I'm really new with using gouache, so I'm, I'm not quite confident enough. I'm starting to get the hang of it about here when I really start laying down gouache in a way that makes sense to me and um, I've been successful with in the past. Here you can see the way that I blend gouache, which is to lay down what's close to my darkest dark and then lay lighter colors on top of it while it's still a little bit wet or alternatively lay down my darkest dark or close to my darkest dark and then lay my lighter values down on top of it and either use my finger to kind of blend it in or I use a very slightly wet brush and crosshatch between the two values, which you can kind of see me doing here. It's less of a crosshatch motion here because I'm not being super precise. This is more, like I said, a painterly piece, but that's how I blend gouache. The swans were standing in quite a bit of grass and then behind them, between the two bodies of water that you can kind of see, there was like a bunch of water lilies that looked like another piece of island and I really struggled with how to differentiate between those two textures. I think I did a pretty good job 
but it was my first time trying to do something like this. I've never painted a landscape before really, and certainly not in gouache. So I was really intimidated at this point. I was especially inspired to paint the grass the way that I did by Al's painting of Ellie from The Last of Us. I watched that video just completely awestruck because she makes it look so easy and I just really wanted to try. So I laid down these mid-tones here and then had to go in and block in my swans, obviously, because the grass goes over top of them. It's really trust the process until the end when you put the highlights in. One of the things that I'm still learning to do with gouache is push the values more. So this painting does end up more in the mid-tones range, which I'm actually happy with. I'm usually a contrast girly, but because this is kind of a rainy day, while we were out and about, there was mist and like sprinkling rain pretty much the entire time we were there. And I think that atmosphere gets carried over into the painting, so I'm not upset with the lack of contrast, but it is something that I'm learning to achieve. And you can see me really struggling it with it, trying to push the whites in these keys. I started darker than I meant to with them and then really struggled to layer the white on top and really get them to pop. If I remember correctly, that is not the last time I go in and add more white on them. <laughs> I know this is something that a lot of people struggle with because gouache dries differently than it lays down. So you may think that you're hitting your brightest brights when you're absolutely not, and you may think you're hitting your darkest darks when you are absolutely not. And it really just takes a lot of trial and error, and it's different with every gouache that you use. Um, so if you're in a similar position to me and you think you're nailing it and you're absolutely not, don't feel bad. Just keep trying. It really will become easier as you become more familiar with your paints. And it's not the end of the world if your painting doesn't have quite enough contrast. I wasn't quite pleased with the amount of contrast I achieved, so I went in and added some with colored pencil later on. And it became my favorite detail of the entire painting. So just be creative and try different things. Um, get out of your comfort zone a little, it's gonna be okay. Here you can see me kind of trying to do that water lily texture. I really struggle with simplification and all I kept thinking was like, okay, these need to be kind of more blue green so that they don't come more forward than the stuff in front of them. But they also need to like have some like color differentiation so it doesn't just look like a big like green poop. And um, I was struggling, I was struggling, I'm not gonna lie, but I think it turned out okay. <laughs> I was also really nervous putting in those grasses that are growing up over the water uh, line because it felt like painting in eyelashes, which is, I am ashamed to say, something that I still really struggle with to this day. I'm just not very good at that more like natural randomness that grass and eyelashes and things like that have. Uh, you can see me kind of struggle with it during this entire painting actually, but especially there I was, I was shaking in my boots, I'm not gonna lie. So the swans are kind of standing in this grass that have these little natural paths in them, which makes sense because swans are walking through them on a regular basis and I really wanted to make sure that I captured that and I think at this point I was like oh yeah no like I'm I'm finally getting it you're starting to see that you know they're in a deeper spot in the grass and there's these paths leading up to them and maintaining that was really really important to me but surprisingly hard like I said I struggle with the more natural looking randomness so i kept wanting to go in and add texture where texture didn't need to be you don't need a bunch of texture in your shadows there's less light there so there's less detail it's okay 
It was once I started putting in this like more yellow green that I feel like things really started to come together and I'm quite happy <laughs> with how things go from here. I think I honestly did a really good job and I'm really proud of how I managed to pull this off when this is something that's so new to me. I'm still really new to gouache. I've only done a couple of paintings with it. And I think that this really speaks to how intuitive gouache can be, depending on what kind of painter you are. I know some people really struggle with it because the ways it tends to dry lighter or darker than you're expecting. But I find that if you work dark to light and you work in thin layers, it's really not as big of a deal as you would think. Also, can we just talk about how nice it is to see birds on vacation? While we were there, we were sitting out on the dock and I was just listening to all of the bird calls and reading my book and it was just so lovely. And every five to ten minutes, a crane or a heron would fly by. And I'm personally from an area where that's not the norm. So I was just enthralled for like three hours. And every time I see a duck or a goose or a swan, I'm like ecstatic like a little kid. So getting to go to this bird sanctuary was just amazing. And I got to meet up with my high school friend, Sam, who I haven't really seen since I moved out to California when I was 19. She moved out of our hometown uh, shortly after I came back and I just haven't really seen her since because we live a couple of hours away from each other. But when I was in uh, the area that she was working, I happened to message her and tell her. And she said, where? Give me a location. <laughs> so I did. And we were able to hang out at the sanctuary. And it was incredible. This is when the painting really comes together for me. I I wanted to use a black or a brown or even a magenta to line these birds, but all I could find was this blue and I'm so glad because I love what the blue did for the painting. I only lightly lined and some of the lines I go in and soften. If you didn't know, you can kind of rework gouache on top of your lines. So if you put your lines in a little too thick, you can kind of soften them with the gouache around them. This was the most chaotic <laughs> tape ripping I have ever experienced. The whole painting wanted to run away, so no satisfying tape feel for you, sorry. But here we go. I'm actually in love with this. I think I did a fantastic job. I hope you love it. Thank you for joining me on this journey, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Go drink some water and make some art. Bye!